in this video you're going to see if I can pull off this move here and see whether I can bring home second place in my Nations Cup race. Hey guys and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of GT Sport related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. Today's video is the next video in our beginner to winner series. This series documents my journey of going from a controller with assists to a wheel without any and trying to achieve my ultimate goal of becoming an A plus ranked driver. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end of the video to see where I eventually finish and whether we make any progress. So let's get into it. So today's race is going to be the latest Nations Cup race which is a 15 minute Endura around Bathurst in Group 3. You'll see us there qualified in second behind LSD Chemical Boy here in a Corvette. Here we are there, not far behind him at all, pretty close. Fellow Erie's community member there, Fabuki, long time subscriber. Another Corvette behind, another Brit. And to round out the top five, we've got a Frenchman in the Viper. So, here we go then. As always, the first lap is just going to be to get through it. I'm not too worried about Fabuki behind us. I trust him, he's a good racer, so I don't think he's going to hit us up the backside into Hell's Corner for the first time, which he doesn't. So the strategy for the first lap of this race is just to see the pace of the Corvette up in front. You can see him moving slightly there to try and break the tail. I'm into sixth gear early. I need to start fuel saving because at this length of race, pitting just isn't an option. You'll see that the Corvette there goes a little bit deep into Griffin's Bend for the first time. The first big bit of braking of the race so far. That'll be because the car is full of fuel. We've slowed down a little bit with Fabuki closing on us, but again, just quite happy to trust that he's not going to chuck it up the inside at any point. So, we're going to try and get our head down now. We've just got to try and break that one second toe so that the car behind can't sit and fuel save. It looks as if the Corvette's going to be pretty quick, so I'm not going to ruin my race by running off and chasing him and destroying my fuel and potentially binning it because there's a good few points for us on offer today. Not only from a driver rating standpoint, but also in the championship standings, which could lead, I hope I'm not speaking too soon, but the SS ranking, which would be absolutely fantastic. But before all of that, we've got to bring this one home. So let's concentrate on this one first. So as you can see, the Corvette there has got quite a bit of pace in comparison to us and we're pushing it quite hard at the moment. We've managed to get the gap away from Fubuki now. Oh, it's not even Fubuki anymore. It looks like he's been overtaken by Redline72 there, that Brit. But it looks like in the rear view that he's gone wide there, so Fubuki's taken that place back. But it's all good for us, as we're almost two seconds ahead of them now. We can start to settle in, because I think, as I say, the Corvette is gonna to be tough to catch. And I don't know, he might be pitting, I'm not sure. But we've got to concentrate on our own race, so I've got the fuel gauge up now. We're going to have about seven laps left of this race, and we're at 6.9 and now 6.8, 6.7 laps remaining now. So we're going to have to, whilst keeping the pace up, start considering our fuel. As we come across the line here to start lap number three, if you have a look in third, Fabuki has been overtaken by Hydrotype R, who was from memory in a Ford GT. Now that does not bode well for us because that thing is an absolute monster in the straight line and we're having to do a bit of fuel saving as well to make sure that we've got enough to get across the line in just over 10 minutes time. But he's going to have the same problem. Well, presuming it's a he. That Ford GT, whilst it's a monster in a straight line, it's going to eat up its tyres and it's also going to absolutely drink fuel. 
So for me, I'm not too worried about it through this tight technical section here, but we are going to be left open coming down the front straight, so the mountain straight, and we're also going to be vulnerable coming out of Forest Elbow and down the Conrod straight into the chase. So this is what I'm going to have to be wary of as we come down through the S's here. Just keep it tight, keep tight, get on the power nice and early. So it'll be interesting to see what his strategy is because he's going to be with us on this straight here, coming out of Forest Elbow here. He's under a second behind us. So if he's going flat out, he'll be with us by the end of this straight, I would imagine, with the slipstream. But it doesn't look like he's catching, so that says to me that he's fuel saving, which is a smarter move. Especially in that car, because he knows he's going to have the straight line speed to make a move on us when he chooses, if he can stay with us and keep it on the track. So for me at the moment, I'm just going to keep managing the fuel, managing the tyres as well because we're going to need them come the end of the race to try and fend off this guy in the Ford GT. So, on to lap number four now. Eight and a half minutes left. So it's going to be an eight lap race by my calculations. It's going to be tight, I think. We've jumped forward a little bit now to lap number five. You can see the guy in the lead in the Corvette has pulled out about a second of us, so that's not our race anymore. First is gone, unless he makes a mistake, and I'm happy with that. I'll take second, but as you can see here, the Ford GT is now right with us. You can see him in the rear view there. You can have a look back just to see how close he is. What are his intentions? So, he had a look there, he didn't go for it, so I think he's fuel saving. He hasn't made a lunge which shows me that he can be trusted which is good because if I need to battle with him it allows me to be a little bit more aggressive to hang on to this second place but I think he is saving his fuel and saving his tyres and planning a move over these last three laps so entering lap number six now four minutes fifteen-ish seconds on the clock it's all coming together to be quite explosive at the end, I think. So, end of lap number six here. Forest elbow. I get an okay run down onto the Commodore straight, but I'm anticipating a move here. He's much closer now. But one advantage I've got over him is the Lexus is going to handle much better, even on these warm tyres. So if he makes a move, I'm going to let him pass. I'm going to take the inside line and see how late I can break. He's already proven he's trustworthy, so we're going to let him through. See where he breaks. He actually breaks a little bit early. I was going to tuck him behind, but I'm going to go up the inside here. He gives me room. Either that or he's run wide himself a little bit. And we've managed to stave off that attempt at our second place. So if you have a look at the clock there, it's going to be this lap and one more. So we're going to have two more laps of trying to keep this guy behind. But as I've said before, the main two issues are going to be this one here coming out of Hell's Corner down the mountain straight and the back straight, Conrod straight, down into the chase. He looks like he's a bit further back, so I think we're going to be okay for this part. Then we'll be absolutely fine through the technical section. The question will be if I can keep him off for the next three opportunities after this one, which is going to be the back straight on this lap and then on the final lap, the mountain straight, and then finally, that push into the chase for the final time. So, here we go again. I've just fast forwarded a little bit further down the lap as he can't touch us during that technical section. I'm gonna run a little bit wide here. My tires are really struggling now. Coming out of Forest Elbow, down at the Conrod straight. I'm anticipating another move from him here. The fuel looks okay for us at the moment. I'm still doing a little bit of fuel saving just to make sure. Let's see what happens here. Keep your eye on the rear view here. I'm gonna take the inside. He's gonna go down, well, what is the inside now? He's gonna chuck it right in, go really deep. 
he's got that move but he's looking a bit ragged so I'm not panicking at this point because that thing is going to be a pig through that technical hilly section just need to make sure that we get a good run on him down the back straight so we can stay with him as we come into the final lap here and take advantage of any opportunity so coming in to Hell's Corner here for the final time he's going to run wide which is going to give us a good run on him you see me change into the radar here because we're going to have a bit of him here he's got the inside so we've got the slipstream I think he may have to be fuel saving as well he's trustworthy so I'm going to go down the outside of him into Griffin's Bend see if I can hold on to it down into second here these tyres aren't like this I'll get on the power a little bit of a wiggle but we've made the move stick so we've gone round the outside of him at Griffin's Bend to take that second place back really really happy with that move you can see him wiggling behind so he's struggling like we are both trying to get up this hill trying not to chuck it into the wall here because behind us we've got a bit of a gap you'll be able to see on the map to Fubuki so whilst we can battle aggressively with the comfort there's not too many people closely behind us we don't want to bin it because after all this is for second place in a nation's cup race so very very important coming through the S's here for the final time fuel's looking okay keep my on the radar here look behind he looks for a move here he can't make it so we've got to get on the power smoothly he doesn't and he bins it up the inside there he gets on the power too early he gets an armful of oversteer and he finds himself on the inside wall there at Forest Elbow. So we can relax now, put it back to the fuel gauge so I can see what's going on. We've got half a lap of fuel lip so we're going to be fine. Brake early, don't bin it at this point and we can just bring home this second place. Oh a little bit of oversteer there but nothing crazy. Coming down into Murray's corner for the final time Oh, what a race. Happy with that one. Good battling with him there. And we come home to take what I think is a well-deserved second place. So, here we are then. Second place confirmed. A clean race bonus as well. And we've got 1,310 championship points for that. Fantastic. So, let's have a look now at how our driver rating has been affected so after a couple of races at Le Mans which I didn't bring to the channel because they were an absolute disaster I went down to 33,166 points but this race in the Nations Cup has brought us up to 34,500 points so very very good there happy with that as you can see we're stagnating a little bit but I'm hoping with the new weekly races I'm hoping I'm going to get a kind combination and we can push on up to 40 and beyond this week and that is the end of the video guys as always thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already thanks again so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one cheers